Well, it's been a while, but I figured I'd do a video on the forts and rebuild. It's been a couple months since I made a video. I managed to get all, all the pistons back in with all new rings. All new valves are in the motor. Six new valve guides. A couple new valve spring keepers. A couple new valve spring retainers. The old retainers for the, uh, this is an old retainer. It's for the pin style valves. I can show you a pin style valve uh, right here. It's got the hole and the valve stem. This is for a pin style. We had to update them to uh, keeper style because the new valves were keeper style. So uh, there's a couple new, I think down on this end, there's a couple new valve spring retainers on there. Uh, all the seats were ground in this motor. It's kind of hard to tell in the camera, but in the lighting, but all the cylinders were honed. It's coming together, finally, getting there, one step at a time. Um, when we did install the new valves and the new guides, we had to ream some of the guides. Let me move this cap out of the way. On the uh, guides, when we installed them, they actually got a burr on top from, from uh, installing them. So we knocked the burr off, but they were still sticky on the valves where this one's moving kind of nice and free but it's only moving nicely because the valve stems wore on this valve because it's a used valve on the new valves being that they were full size and the guides being that they were uh, not wore at all they were a little bit on the sticky side so I ordered a 313 reamer and we reamed out all the new guides in here and, and we even ran the reamer through the two old guides that were still in here just to clear it up a little bit um, they seem to move real nice. You don't want a sticky valve because Fortunes were known to have sticky valves to begin with. And you just don't want to start out with a sticky valve. Especially because on the valve train down here, there's really very few oil holes. There's actually only one oil hole, and it's over here by the timing gears. You can kind of see it down in that corner. That's where the timing gears actually throw the oil up in there. And other than that hole, there's really no other major means of oiling in this valve train. The only other thing that has oil holes in it is each individual lifter on each, or push rod, whatever you want to call it, has one slight oil hole in it just to kind of lubricate the passage for the lifter. So you want to make sure you have some clearance in those, in the guides to begin with. We uh, gap the valves to 16 thousandths. The Fortson book says 20 is ideal, but then I was reading in another book that states you can the motor will run anywhere from 7 to 22. So with that being said, we kind of figured 16 seemed to be a pretty decent happy medium where there's some room for clearance. So that should be all good. If, if there's a problem, we can always readjust it, but we'll have to take the head back off to do that because on these motors, you actually have to trim the valve stems down to get your clearance. Um, here's a valve stem right here and what you have to do is you have to cut the end of the valve stem off and you usually do that in a the, the proper way is in a valve grinder and that's how we did this. You actually got to pull each valve and trim off each valve custom for each hole. So if you're we're using all new valves in this motor but if you were using your old valves which I have in this valve board here it would be wise to have a valve board um, if you look at the board here, it actually has a number four by this hole. Underneath this valve would have a number three, number two, and so on. If you don't have a valve board or you can't get one, you can just make one. Just drill a hole, drill some holes in a piece of wood and label them one, two, three, four, all the way up to, up to uh, eight. Um, a lot of automotive rebuilders back in the 50s and 60s would supply you with valve boards. You just go in there and ask them, they'd hand you one. Because it was their means of it. It was like their business card for back then. It was their means of advertising. This is an old valve board from the 70s from a local mom and pop shop around here. But um, this way you're not way off on your valve clearance when you go to regap them again. At least if you, if you are using the old valves, you know which hole they came out of and you got a good start. This motor, when we first started, when we tore it apart, some of them were gapped really big. I, what it was, I don't know exactly, but... They had a, a lot of valve clearance and what happened was it actually hammered over the tip of the valve stem and we actually had to run a file on them, file off the burr that was formed on here just to get the valves out of the block. 
So you don't, that's one of the reasons why you don't want to have too much clearances. That's what happens. But we got them all out and uh, all the new ones are in now. So it's cleaning up pretty good. Uh, another little neat thing I'll show you with this valve. Um, let me see where it's. On this valve right here on the head of the valve, it actually says Fordson on it, which is kind of neat. We pulled two of those valves out of this block. So there was two factory original Fordson valves that were still in here. Um, like I said before, we reamed out the guides with a 313 reamer. We could have maybe even used a 314. It probably would have gave it nice clearance too, but with the stock brand new valve guides and the brand new valves, they just seemed a little sticky. Um, I have my two new rods, not new rods, but rebabbited and remachined rods in there in three and four cylinder. So they're back in there. They're shimmed out proper. The motor turns over nice and easy, which is good. Um, I'll, uh, I'll show you my little oil pan fix here. If you watched one of the other videos that I have online on my oil pan here, it had a large hole in it from uh, from water getting in number one cylinder and getting in the pan and the water sat down in there you can actually see the drain plug hole it's right down here the drain plug hole is so this is the lowest part of the oil pan and of course the water sat there and then it froze and it, and it popped out these two pieces of cast iron right here out of there um, I talked, at first there was no con real big concern about it. I talked to a few, few people about it. They said, don't worry about it from the people on the tractor end of it. But then I started talking to engine rebuilders and they said I should be concerned with it because there's no oil filter in this motor and it all relies on the sump for catching the sludge and, and the debris. So after further thought, I kind of looked at it, evaluated it. And um, if you can kind of see this little plate down here is the end of it. This is actually where all your heavies would flush down in this down in this oil valley, flush down and head towards the drain plug. So that when you take out the drain plug, you would get all your heavy contaminants and your debris first. So being that the flywheel sits back here, a lot of the engine mechanics were concerned that with this flywheel spinning and with this hole being open, the heavy contaminants would come in there and get re-stirred back up and shot back out through the motor. So they, they pretty much told me I should do something about it. So I contemplated welding it, but uh, it seems like soft cast. It seems like it's weldable. I just didn't really want to take a chance on it being it's the only oil pan I got, and I don't know where I could find another one fairly easily, and to ship it, it would be atrocious because this pan weighs quite a bit. So the more I sat and thought about it, welding it or do what with it or epoxy I kind of evaluated it and the crack actually goes through and under and it ends right right at the edge of this piece right over here so the crack isn't in the pan at all it's just in this this piece of metal down here it's it's just in this that's it the crack and the crack ends so it isn't like it's an oil pan so the more I thought about it I thought I could epoxy the two pieces in there but then if somebody ever pulled the drain plug and looked up at it and see the epoxy maybe they might pick at it with a screwdriver and next thing you know they'll bust out these two pieces and they'll be flying around in the motor I didn't really want to do that scenario um, the welding scenario if it wasn't so oil soaked or if I had means of steam cleaning it or baking it out that would be nice but with this thing being running in oil its whole life I figured that might be a little bit of an issue welding it plus this uh, if you want to call this a valley or where the oil sits for the rod to, to scoop in to catch oil. Being that this isn't the way to actually weld that properly, there's only maybe a half inch of clearance down in here. There's just enough to stick my finger in. It seemed kind of a, you could probably tack something in there, but it wouldn't be a real good job. So after I thought about it for a little while, I kind of came up with an idea. I kind of took a plate. It's about 16 gauge, this piece of sheet metal. And I bent a little hook on it to receive that flange up in front. And then I just drilled two holes in it. And what I'm going to do with it is stick it in here like so, so it catches in the front and, and I can pull it back. And then when I pull it back, I have 
these two holes right here that I'm just going to go shoot these two screws in with some little Loctite on them, I'm thinking. Put those two screws in and that'll lock this cover on. And I'm hoping that'll keep the oil out. It's pretty much watertight. It covers most of the, the hole. There's just a lead of void on the one side, but for the, for the most part it, co it covers all that sludge hole now. So I'm hoping that'll work. It seems like a easy enough fix that anybody could do it. So if you have the same problem, maybe maybe this idea will work for you too. All right. Thanks a lot.